In part four of the five-part series on Ableton Live, I discuss the options in the Preferences panel. There are some very important settings you should check before beginning your journey with Ableton Live. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, and welcome to Distinct Mastering. My name is Freddie. I'm a mastering engineer, producer, DJ, and president of Sleeping Giant Music. For over two decades, I've helped artists grow their careers, and now I'm here to help you with your music production skills. If you'd like a free stereo mastered sample from me, be sure to check the link below in my description. Now let's chat about the Ableton Live's Preferences panel. Okay, I've got Ableton open here, and I'm gonna give you a brief overview of the Preferences panel. So let's hop right into the Preferences over here, and let's talk about each tab briefly. The first one is the look and feel. Here you can change the language, change how Ableton looks and feels. So I encourage you to take a look at this yourself and customize it to your liking. Some of the more important ones here, the zoom display where you can zoom in so you can make things bigger or smaller. You can change the track and clip colors here if you'd like, and you can customize Ableton from your themes. So here you have like the mid light, mid dark, uh, dark, and you have the old live nine look. Um, I prefer to go light and I change my brightness to 80%. Here you have your audio settings. So here's where you'll pick your drivers and your audio interface inputs and outputs and set up your input and output configurations. So as you can see, I have my universal audio Thunderbolts and I have my inputs all selected and my outputs all selected. So this is something you'll need to set up. Then you have your sample rate and your latency. So if you're experiencing some latency while trying to record with say a microphone or vocalist or instrumentalist, um, you can lower the, the latency here. Now with obviously uh, with yeah. universal audio and console, there's zero latency recording. So that's another thing that you can have running in the background, but that's a whole nother topic. And if you're interested in a video on that, leave a comment down below. So here you can, uh, you can see how much latency you have and you also get a test tone. If you want to do a test tone to see if your interface is actually working, change the volume, change the frequency, and you can see how your usage simulator is actually working with your CPU. Next, you have your link, tempo, and MIDI section. So these are just some more options for how things work with MIDI. Also, you have the options to set up a control surface if you have one, and then you can set up the MIDI ports here for your tracks, your sync, remote. And if this is a little confusing, or you're not using any MIDI, then this screen is not for you, but you can also refer to the Ableton reference manual for a more detailed look at this. But really, what you want to do is just select your control surface and there's not much to set up here. The next one is going to be your file and folder preferences where you can create analysis files. Uh, you can turn that on or off. You have your sample editor if you want to set one up. I don't have one selected. This shows you where your temporary folder is for temporary live recordings. You have your Max for Live application and then it just gives you some cache space and things like that. It shows you where your cache folder is and how much you can limit there. Below that is going to be your library. And this right here is going, the most important thing here is the location of user library. If you use an external drive like me, then you're gonna wanna change this because by default, it's gonna be on your main drive. And this will be your installation folder for Ableton Pack. So if you need to change that as well, you can do that here. Next, you have your plugins, where if you have a plugin that's not showing up, you can hit rescan. You could tell Ableton what to look for if you like to use audio units, VST, VST3, or if you like to use custom folders. And then here's a great section to take a look at is your plugin windows. If you wanna see multiple plugins at once, you need to turn this on. By default, Ableton has it off. And when you're going from track to track, Ableton will automatically hide the plugins on one track while you click to the next. So if you wanna leave those open, say you're adjusting a parameter on one track, but you wanna see a parameter on another plugin, you need to turn that off. So you could switch back and forth between these as needed. And then this will auto open your plugin windows when you click a track, it'll open them up. If you don't like that, you can turn that off as well. Next, you have your record, warp, and launch preferences. So you have your file type, your bit depth, your count ins on record, you know, how things work basically with recording and warps, uh, your default warp mode, default mode being beats, and then here's one of the most important settings that I wanted to point out here is create fades on clip edges. And I spoke about this in the last video on arrangement view. If you didn't catch that, I'll leave a link up above. But if you like to drag and drop audio into your arrangement view, you should turn this off. By default, I believe it is on in Ableton. And when it's on, it's gonna create a little fade at the beginning and end of your clip edges. 
which is ideal if you're trying to finalize your projects. But when you're importing or dragging and dropping, say, kick drums or, you know, samples of any sort, you're going to be chopping off those transients with that little fade. So I recommend you turn that off. Down below, if you use Ableton launch stuff, which I don't, the, the settings are here. And then you have your tap tempo settings and MIDI note drawing. Um, if you want to draw with pitch lock, you could turn that on. And last but not least, you have your licenses section where you can check your, you know, authorize your Ableton um, and just check various parameters related to Ableton and maintenance itself. So that's a brief overview of the Ableton preferences. I just wanted to hit some very important ones there for you to check out while you're getting started with Ableton. And that's a detailed look at the Ableton Live Preferences panel. If you have any questions, be sure to drop me a comment down below. If we've never worked together before and you'd like a free stereo master sample from me, be sure to check the link below in my description. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and the bell notification will keep you up to date. Thanks again for watching. My name is Freddie from The Sync Mastering, and have a great day.